Ladies and gentlemen, hello, this is Debo from Land Say Go, and today we actually have a deck doctor for you today. So deck doctor, basically we have viewers, they send us decks, we take a look at them and we try to upgrade them, change them, make them a little bit better for the metas that they're trying to play against. And we have one submitted from a, a viewer of ours, a longtime supporter, the guy who never goes 4-0. And we have this list here and we're gonna break it down, but before we do, if you like our content, we'd really appreciate it if you give us a like, a comment, a share, a subscribe. It's a great way to support our channel for free. Let's go ahead and break on down this deck. So what we have here is a deck called Ready Player One, and it's a hardened scales list. And we'll go ahead and take a look at what we've got going on. Here's, here's his list. So we have Three Fuel Passage, four, uh, six Forests, four Mana Confluence, a Plains, four Sun Petal Grove, four Temple Garden. That's for our mana base. We then are obviously running Hardened Scales, four copies of it. And we're also running four copies of Conclave Mentor. Now Conclave Mentor uh, basically does what Hardened Scales does. It, when, whenever one or more plus one plus one counters will be placed on a creature you control, you put that many plus one on that creature instead, and then when Conclave Mentor dies, you gain life equal to its power. So it's a 2-2, two -two, so if it dies right away, you gain two life, which could be pretty good, pretty relevant. Uh, but if it gets bigger, then it, obviously you'll gain more life if it dies. And then in his list, he's running a uh, an Explore package. So we have our four Wild Growth Walkers, we have four Jade Light Rangers, four Murfoot Branch Walkers. Uh, he's also running, uh, for a little bit of life gain and uh, more counter support, four Scavenging News, for some card draw, we have three Tireless Trackers, and then we also have four Orange Wreath Ooze, which is new from uh, Zendikar Rising. And this card is two and a green for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. And then whenever uh, Orange Reef or Ooze attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So pretty sweet. Things can get out of hand really fast with this card. And we're also running Nissa Voice of Zendikar, which uh, is a three mana Nissa. Comes from a three loyalty. We can tick up, put a zero one green plant into, into play. We can neg two to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. Then we can neg seven to gain X life, draw X cards, the number of lands we control. So we probably won't get to that minus seven. Uh, it has happened before, but we probably won't get there. Instead, we're probably gonna be using this to, cr to create creatures to then uh, neg two to be able to put a bunch of counters on things. Now, there is one thing about this list that you guys have probably already caught since this is a pioneer list. Uh, he also has four copies of Walking Ballista. Now, the problem is Ballista is now banned in Pioneer. So, um, right off the bat, he, he, unfortunately, you'd be disqualified if you went to a tournament with it. Um, that happened uh, maybe about a month ago. So, we had to do some tweaking, and I think what we came up with is pretty good. Now, you went with the green-white version of this, and also, I, I have to mention, you submitted it without a sideboard, so we did build a sideboard for you, and we tried to, to take into consideration the meta and things like that. Um, I tried to, to keep your list as similar to what you had as possible, um, but we did end up changing colors. So we went away from green-white, and instead, we went green-black. So, uh, basically, the, land, the mana base is similar. Um, we downed one forest and up to swamp, and then we just switched the, uh, the dual lands with the proper green-black dual lands. Now, your list didn't really have any removal whatsoever. I needed to change that. We need at least a little bit of removal in the list. So we did add three copies of Fatal Push in the main. Um, since you have Fabled Passage, you could potentially get uh, the combo with the Fatal Push and the Fabled Passage. We also added three Thought Seeds to the main board. Uh, being able to strip away something that your opponent has very early if you don't have a hardened scales or something like that it could be extremely relevant. So again, uh, that's going to be very important. We did actually take out one Nissa. I know the nag on her is really great, but um, I th we needed to have some room for some of these other things. So we did take out one of her. And the creature we ended up replacing the Blista for was Hangerback Walker. And Hangerback Walker I think is a pretty good one. It grows. Uh, the problem is that you have to tap it to grow, but you can get it down as a 1-1 one, one on turn 2. If it dies, it replaces itself with a 1-1 one, one flyer. Uh, it gets exponentially better after that. Plus, after you get it down, if it doesn't die, you can just keep making it larger and larger and larger. And if you get a hardened skills down, say on turn 1, 
Uh, turn two, Hangerback Walker becomes a two two. And then uh, the next turn, you can get down maybe an another two drop and then take up Hangerback Walker, make him a four four, et cetera, et cetera. Then when they blow up the board with a board wipe, you then have a Hangerback Walker that then produces four, six, eight Thopters with flying that you can then follow up with, say, a Nissa Voice of Zendikar, Neg 2, and have a whole bunch of, of, of attackers. So that's um, what we ended up replacing Blista with. I think it's a, a pretty good replacement. Now, we are also still running your, uh, your Explore package, but we did take it down just a little bit. So we're running only two Wild Growth Walkers. Um, these often catch a lot of removal pretty early. And uh, so we, we ended up putting two in. And they just don't grow if you don't have any of your uh, Explorer package. And you weren't running a, a complete Explorer package that had uh, say 16 or 18 creatures with Explore to really make use of that Wild Growth Walker. You only had eight creatures that had Explore. So I think uh, we, we ended up taking a couple of those out and we also took out a single uh, Jade Light Ranger and a single Merfolk Branch Walker. So you're running three copies of these. So the Explore package is still there. It's just a little bit less, but what we made room for, I think is gonna be really good. We also took out one Oran Reef Ooze as well. Now. We did uh, replace your Conclave Mentor with Winding Constrictor. Um, I think right now, since you didn't have a sideboard, really, I, I think the Winding Constrictor is just gonna be the better card. It's got a two, three body on it. I think this is just gonna fit a little bit better for you. So we're gonna go ahead and keep that in there. We also have uh, some copies of Rishkar for a two and a green for a two, two. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on up to a two creatures so you put it on risk bar you could then put it on another creature that doesn't have a plus one plus one counter on it pretty great so that way you can just really spread out your hardened scales value um, and then the big thing here is creatures you control the plus one plus one counter on it have a uh, tap add green so that is really really good we have then we cut back a couple of the scavenging ooze in the main board. They're better as a sideboard piece than they are in the main board. Now, having some graveyard interaction in the main, I think is still good. That's why we left a couple of them in. I don't know if we necessarily would want to be running a full four copies. I think having more like the thought seizes and the fatal pushes and things like that are going to be uh, more important. And then obviously we left the three tireless trackers in because it's your card draw. It does get bigger as, as landfall happens, things like that. So uh, that's the main list. Then if we look at the sideboard, we actually added a sideboard here. We have a lot of things that do a lot of really cool stuff for you. So we have uh, two amulet of safekeeping. This is mainly up against like that Rakdos, uh, that Rakdos list that runs the Pyromancer that, that creates the 1-1 elementals uh, whenever they cast instants and sorceries. So it just turns off the elementals. They become a, a basically just, just chump blockers for them. And uh, also if they are trying to target you with like burn spells or kind of combo off in, in a way uh, to deal a whole bunch of damage to you, it can force them, like it really tax them out with that first effect on there because it, uh, every time they target you is something that they pay an additional colorless mana. So it's very, very good. Uh, we also added two Assassin's Trophies to this list. Um, we have a lot of things like Mono Green Walkers that is, that is now kind of a thing in the format. You've got, you still have like uh, Teamer uh, Reclamation that uses the Wilderness Reclamation that you may want to blow up. So having, having some answers to just any permanent is going to be really, really good. Uh, speaking of Reclamation, we're also running two Gem Razors in there. So being able to blow up things uh, like enchantments and artifacts plus being able to give your creatures trample, that's a big thing. So like here, your creatures get, could get really huge, but you're not gonna be able to get in damage unless they have trample. So um, having a couple tr of gem razors in the sideboard could be very good for you. Against Esper Control with counter spells and things like that, we are running a couple of copies of Destiny Spinner. Uh, we do have some enchantments, so uh, we could potentially have uh, some additional blo uh, blockers or attackers with its second ability, but it's mainly the first ability that's uh, really important. Creatures and enchantments you spells you, you cast can't be countered, and it's two mana for a 2-3, uh, so it can just kind of skirt underneath your opponent's early counter spells. So I think that this card is going to be really good for you. Now, we did also see, like, uh, Niv Delight is a, a deck in the format. You've also got a lot of, like, Rakdos Reanimation or Kroxas and things like that. So, Graph Digger's Cage is going to be a really good answer to those decks. Also, it stops Collected Company as well. So, uh, basically, creatures 
cannot enter the battlefield from graveyards or libraries, and players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. So it stops uh, Bring the Light Niv Mizza combo, it stops Coco, it stops Kroxa, it stops Uro. So I think that Grafter's Cage and then Cyborg's can be really good for you. So you're going to want to have that in there as well. And then we're also running uh, Pithing Needle, three copies. Again, it can stop things like the, the Elder Giants. It can stop things uh, that have other crazy activated abilities like Planeswalkers, but also things um, that may not necessarily be as prevalent in the format. Um, say like the, the Cat the cat oven combo or something like that. If someone were to play that, Pithy Needle could be an answer to something like that as well, where you could name the cat, you could name the oven, and it just completely shuts those off as well. And then obviously we put in a couple more copies of Scavenging Use uh, in the sideboard. So again, it's it's good against you know aggro where you can gain some life. It's it's also just good uh, as way to hate on Elder Giants and uh, being able to to have other threats on board that can just grow larger and larger with all of your effects. So uh, some other things I wanted you to consider. So I, I again, I, this is kind of based off of your list. I didn't want to change it too, too much from what you had. All right. I did change it quite a bit, but I didn't want to change it too, too much. There are some other things here I wanted you to consider. So we also have things like experiment one. So experiment one, it's a one mana, one, one, um, it has evolved. Uh, remove two plus one plus one counters from it and uh, regenerate it. So it could stop things like Fatal Push or Abrupt Decay or, 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 or things that, that basically would cause it to be destroyed, um, but you can still regenerate, so that'd be really great. Uh, and because it has evolved and you're having your your hardened scales and things like that, as you get your larger and larger creatures down, it can just get bigger and bigger, uh, which is pretty cool. Another thing to maybe consider is Drana, Liberator of Malakir. So she is going to be a three mana, two, three flying first strike. And then whenever she deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. So this is a really cool one to like maybe mirror up with your Oran Reef, uh, your Oran Reef Ooze, right? So um, it attacks, it puts a plus one, plus one counter on everything. Your Drana attacks uh, what, what um, you can basically deal damage with her first, put a counter on your team. If you have your hardened skills out, they get really big too. So that's another thing to consider. We also, um, we, we do have two creatures that are like this at the moment. Uh, one of them is Oathsworn Knight, but I put up the better one here uh, to take a look at. We have Undergrowth Champion. Okay, so one green green for a 2-2. Two, two. If damage would be dealt to Undergrowth Champion while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove a plus one plus one counter from Undergrowth Champion. And then Landfall, when a land enters a battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Undergrowth Champion. So this is another way you can maybe make use of some of, of uh, some of your land triggers and things like that, but also your plus one plus one counter synergies. So Undergrowth Champion, it just, it just does its thing, man. So you get it down on turn three, uh, maybe on turn four, and you play a land, and then all of a sudden, uh, if you have a hardened scales or a running constrictor out, it gets to be like a four four or a five five, and then it's just almost impossible to kill. And if you play that alongside like your Oath Sworn Knight, if you're if you want to go that route, now you have two sets of, of creatures that are relatively inexpensive at three mana that you can then get down that just don't die from from normal damage stuff they have to blow it up with a board wipe uh so and then you can even run things uh that we'll get to touch on here in a second to maybe protect those as well so undergrowth champion i think it could be a really good a good option for your list as well so we, we did mention that you weren't running a whole lot of removal. Another card to maybe consider is Voracious Hydra. So again, you get a lot of a lot of uh, benefit from the uh, the hardened scales and the winding constrictor. Um, but also you can just you know double its plus one plus one counters <laughs> if you just want a giant creature. Uh, it does have tramples, so it already has that evasion attached to it, but it also fights other creatures. So you can use it to, to clear the way for your other your other uh, team members, and I, I think this could just be a really good option uh, for whatever you're trying to do. Uh, the last creature I want to touch on, uh, which could be really hilarious, is Mana Gorger Hydra. So three mana, one one. That doesn't seem great, but hang on. Uh, it's got trample, which is good. Okay. Uh, whenever a player casts a spell, put a plus one plus one counter 
on Mana Gorge or Hydra. So what does that mean? Well, uh, basically if you cast a spell, you put a plus one plus one counter on it, and then if your opponent casts a spell, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. So if you have a Hardened Scales on turn one, Winding Constrictor on turn two, this on turn three, your opponent then plays a couple of spells, I mean, you're looking at a huge Hydra very fast, and it could be a really great way for you to do a lot of damage really quickly. Uh, the other thing to, to kind of consider is maybe protection from board wipes. So we have things like Inspiring Call. Uh, this, I think, is actually pretty good. I think people undervalue this card quite a bit. It's two and a green. It's it's an instant. So three mana, it's a little expensive for Pioneer. Uh, it was pretty good in Standard when it was around. So obviously great like Commander or something like that. But you draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Those creatures gain Indestructible until end of turn. So it helps prevent board wipes and things like that. Uh, from blowing up your creatures, plus you get to refill your hand, which I think is really important when you're when you're playing a deck like this, where you're kind of committing a lot to the board really quickly. Um, another one to maybe consider is like Heroic Intervention or something like that. It's two mana, it's a little bit less expensive, but again, it does draw you cards. So if you would rather have the card draw, then great. Um, if you'd rather have the, uh, the two mana spell that also gives Hexproof, uh, then you maybe want to consider Heroic Intervention as well. So those are some options. One other option that I don't have pulled up here uh, that I think you should maybe consider, since there is a lot of target removal in the format, is maybe consider Shaper Sanctuary, either in the main board or in the sideboard. And what's really great about Shaper Sanctuary is whenever your creatures get targeted by a spell that your opponents control, maybe even ability too, I can't quite remember that, but it's a, I know at least it's a spell, you get to draw a card. So they go to Fatal Push your creature, you draw a card. If you have a couple of them out, you draw a couple of cards. So I think that that's really good. I, I remember playing that in a very low to the ground aggro list in the main deck, and it it just makes your opponents not know how to play their own deck because they're now afraid of you drawing cards whenever they go to target something. So you just keep getting in damage, more and more damage, until eventually they find a board wipe or something like that, and your hand is now full anyways because you've just been getting in a bunch of damage and not playing anything or committing anything. So uh, I think that that's uh, maybe another card to also consider. Shapers. Well, those are the ideas that I have. Hopefully you like them. Uh, again, if we were to take a look at this one, uh, screen here. Uh, I'll have this deck list uh, posted in the description below, so go feel free to take a look at that. Uh, if you want to buy it, it'll be there as well. You can just go ahead and populate it right into the TCG player. Uh, it, there's a, be a link that'll bring you right there. And uh, if you do buy it, it helps support our channel, so thank you for that. But if not, I understand. Here's the list for you. Hopefully you like it. And again, I'm Debo with Lansego.com. Thanks again to the guy who never goes 4-0 for sending in your awesome list. Hopefully my suggestions help you out a lot. And uh, I'll be checking again real soon. Peace. Hey guys, thanks for watching our content. If you liked our video, you'll probably like these as well. And if you would, please take a moment to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And in the description below, you'll find our TCG affiliate link, where you can buy the cards that you need while also supporting us, Lansego, and our show.